Hello everyone, we are here today with Professor Donald Broom. Professor Donald Broom is a professor at the University of Cambridge. He is one of the most important researchers in animal welfare and we want to make some questions to him today. Professor, that's a great pleasure to have you here with us today. And I have four or five questions for you. And I hope it's, it's okay, we have time enough to do that. Uh, what's your opinion about how the animal welfare is being approached in the university that you have been visited all around the world? And what is specifically about Brazil? There has been a very large change in that animal welfare is now a subject which is taught in university courses in almost every country uh, and the number of students of veterinary medicine, animal science, biology, uh, even philosophy who are hearing something about animal welfare is much more now than it was 20 years ago. So it's all this is a big change which has occurred. So animal welfare courses have been introduced in many universities and Brazil has been one of the countries which has been most active in bringing in courses so there are there are far more courses in universities in Brazil than for example in the United States so Brazil is more progressive in this area in Europe everybody everybody who does a veterinary course has to have an animal welfare course by it's it's a required by law and, and in some other countries the same. So I think it's been a big change. So that's in relation to education. Uh, the other thing is what, it's, what is the attitude of people in universities to animals and animal welfare and I think that is uh, changing more slowly because researchers are sometimes don't like the idea that there is a, a research on animal welfare because maybe it will make their research more difficult to carry out so they are not always enthusiastic about it but most uh, universities now have ethics committees they have people who are uh, who are considering whether it is worthwhile to do this study or that study with animals in the university so this it's now being considered much more carefully i think than it used to be and that to me that's a very good thing it means people are thinking about animal welfare and in some cases some of the things which are the worst for the animals are being prevented okay uh, what are the most recent findings, scientific findings, to improve animal welfare, farm animals in specific? We have been finding out new ways to measure animal welfare continuously for the last 25 years. Um, some of the recent things, uh, uh, there, are, there are better methods now for identifying pain in animals. So, for example, uh, in, in our uh, Animal Welfare Indicators AWIN project in the European Union, which has been has collaborators in Brazil. In fact, the coordinator is Anuel Zanella, who is uh, from the University of São Paulo. Uh, some one of the things we have done is been to look at horses and sheep and goats which are in pain and identify that you can see changes in the facial expression, which can be measured by anybody who owns these animals. So we have developed uh, protocols for how to identify how much pain the animal is in and this kind of grimace changes which occur in, in horses and, and sheep and goats they're the same sort of movements that occur in humans so when you when something hurts you go and, and we, what we discovered is that the sheep does that as well and so you have to look carefully but you can do it so that's one example there of, of many and that also I think we are using methodologies um, which are which are more which are which are uh, involve involve quite complicated experiments to identify when animals have good feelings or bad feelings and there are several examples of, of, of how this is being done so people are trying to find out about the feelings of the animals things like fear and pain and uh, good feelings pleasure we are getting a little bit better at identifying those things uh, so in several areas there have been big developments in the methods big developments in the methods of assessing animal welfare in a quantitative and scientific way um, what are the main challenges to improve animal welfare I, I think the biggest one is to change the attitudes of the people who don't think of animals as individual sentient beings they think of them as a source of money or as an object um, so I think we still have something to do in informing people about the functioning of animals and that includes especially uh, the people who are working every day with animals so some people who are working with animals 
have always thought of them as individuals and they have been concerned about their welfare. Other people just think about getting through the job as quickly as possible and the animal is just an object which... So, the idea that this is not an object, it's different from a tractor, uh, it's different from a piece of other piece of machinery on a farm, it's something which you need to have some respect for as an, as an individual. I think that's the, still the biggest challenge. So how do you do that? You, you, have, uh, you have information available which is of good quality. So that might come from many sources, but also you have training courses. So if you want to work on a farm, you should have some training in how animals function. It would include animal welfare. If you want to drive a transport vehicle or work in a slaughterhouse, you should have some training uh, about how the animals are functioning. It usually makes your job easier as well, if you have that training. Could you comment uh, about the position of some companies that they use the principle of animal welfare, but just like such a kind of strategy to a marketing strategy? What yes. do you think about that? Yeah. I, I think that it, for farm animals, that the pressure which the general public exerts on uh, retail companies in particular, uh, but also production companies, uh, to make sure that the worst kind of welfare is prevented, that has been a very important thing. So what we now see is that more and more commercial companies which are selling animal products, food products, they have a code of practice which includes scientific information, uh, which is based on scientific information. So I think the retail companies have improved, have resulted in a bigger improvement in animal welfare than anything else which has happened. Um, but that has come about because the general public has been forcing, forcing the companies to, to, to change. So now the situation in Europe is that most of the supermarket companies, most of the food retail companies have an animal welfare standard as, and also other standards related to environment and, and other aspects of sustainability. This is a very important change and it really is improving things for the animals. It means some of the worst systems are not now being used. Uh, do you think the legislation, Brazilian legislation or other part of the world, could help the animals? Yes. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think these, I think these codes of practice are, are, are valuable, but in some cases you really need to have legislation because you want to have the same the same basic constraints on all the farmers and in some cases you have to have legislation to do that. So for example, um, one of the changes which came in in the European Union was, and, and, and now in about 15 countries around the world, is to ban keeping pregnant sows from buying stalls or in tethers where they can't turn around, they can't move, their needs are not fulfilled. That came about because of public pressure that the change was a, a change in the law which said this is now illegal, you cannot ever do this, you can't keep these animals, these extremely complicated and clever animals, you can't keep them in close confinement with nothing to do all the time. Uh, so that, that has come about better because of law I think and I think there is a, this is one of the things which I know is being discussed at the moment in, in Brazil, has been discussed in the, in government agencies, the Ministry of Agriculture and as well as by scientists and all the people in the commercial companies who are keeping pigs are now aware that there is this pressure from the public to not use these really cruel practices. So I think there will be some, there will be some changes in Brazil in relation to law and there are some other changes which can occur by law. For example, how, what are the practices in a slaughterhouse? It's a good thing to set it out. You, are, you, you have to stand in this way. You have to use this method which works. You can't use some other method which is not reliable. That's best to be presented as a law, I think. So some things are best presented as laws. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays we have uh, a lot of people stealing animal welfare, more than we have before. So <laughs> if you could leave a message for the students today that's going to be the future researchers in the field of animal welfare. Mm. What kind of message could you leave for those people? I think part of the message would be try to keep in touch with several areas of bio biology and the function how animals are functioning. Because some of the developments are occurring because of work using operant conditioning, which is a psychology tool. Other things are because of work of physiologists, 
other, other things are occurring because it's, uh, there is direct studies of how the brain is working. So if you want to, be, if you want to have some knowledge of, of, uh, of the assessment of animal welfare, you have to be aware of several areas of, of biology. So you may be a veterinarian or an animal scientist or a biologist, but you still have to know something about the other areas. So animal scientists have to know something about disease and estimating how the immune system is working, what, what level of disease, what level of injury the, other, the animal has. So that's not just for veterinarians. Everybody needs to know something about that in the, if they are working in, in uh, animal, animal welfare research. So you have to be quite broad in your thinking. Professor, thank you very much for this interview. You're welcome. It's a very inspiring, insightful in interview. And we look forward to see you again in Brazil again, maybe next year. Next year is going to be here, right? We, we hope yeah. so. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. We hope to see you again. Muito obrigado.